Hello, Dr. J here. I'd like to give you an intuitive perspective in using the water analogy toward understanding electricity. Hopefully, the explanation will give you a general understanding about the relationships of voltage, current, resistance, and power. Say you have a liter of soda in a plastic bottle. You have the height of the soda fluid shown here and near the bottom is a hole punched where the size of the hole along with the fluid height governs the amount of the fluid flow. For this water analogy describing electricity you have the height comparable to voltage the fluid comparable to current and the hole size comparable to resistance. Now if you reduce the height of the fluid you have a lower voltage and you also keep the hole size or the resistance the same. But what happens to the current flow? Well you should have a weaker current which then implies when you have a lower voltage and a weaker current you have lower power. Hopefully this analogy gives you the relationship of voltage, current, resistance, and power. Notice the lower the voltage the weaker the current if you keep the resistance the same. In this case the whole size the same. And that's what you should have a discussion which is described as Ohm's law where the voltage and current relationships are directly proportional. So let's do a video demonstration, a quick one, concerning about this water analogy or soda analogy and here we have a full bottle resulting in the tallest height with a pretty good stream flow. And in the next video clip we have a weaker stream as shown here which implies that there should be a smaller amount of fluid in the bottle and as shown you could see that we have a smaller amount resulting in weaker flows. We have an even a weaker stream here. Sometimes it will stop because we're nearing the point where there is no water flow and if I blow on top of the bottle provide more additional pressure we can get it to start a little bit. So there's the amount and here we have a very weak stream where it starts up again. Here I replace the soda with water because it's getting messy on my part. So here we have two holes punch and we can do more work with two holes. But it drains faster as we do more work. And again, we can think, imagine a water wheel at the end of this water flow. So hopefully this gives you an indication of how we have the height of the fluid comparable to voltage, the fluid flow to current, and the size of the hole or the number of holes as a function of resistance. Now let's get back to Ohm's law for a resistor. And here's the relationship where the voltage is directly proportional to the current through the proportionality constant called the resistor. You can also solve for I where you divide R from both sides of this equation to give you this relationship. Now we know power is equal to current times voltage and we can substitute this relationship here voltage equals IR substitute V for IR and you can see here that I times I gives you I, I squared R. You can do this also for voltage where we substitute the current by V divided by R and we have V squared divided by R. Notice the square relationships in both cases, one for the current and one for the voltage. Now what does this P describe? This is the amount of power given off as heat in a resistor. So whenever current flows through a resistor it dissipates as heat.
let's go through an example where V is 15 volts and R is 10 kilo ohms. We know that I is equal to V divided by R, so we can solve for I where we have 15 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms, which gives us 1.5 milliamps. Now the power, we can now that we have voltage and current, is given as IV. So I is 1.5 milliamp, we just calculated, and V is equal to 15 volts. This gives us a final result of 22.5 milliwatts. Now you can also calculate power in a couple ways. Since I'm given voltage and resistance, you could have used this formula, V squared divided by R. If you're given the current and the resistor, you, then you can use this formula, I squared R. This was derived here and for the voltage. We just, uh, using the voltage and resistance when you're given that, we have V squared divided by R.